Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, your LPA webinar series with the 10 year, 10 minute interview, which I'm really happy to host today with a very special leading lady in the name of Hedda Paulson Muller. Hi, Hedda. Hi, Roger. Great to see you online virtually. It's been a while, but uh, it, it, it's really special for me because of your many different hats that are uh, those of a very convinced investor an advocate of impact investing in particular. And it's very difficult to describe you uh, because you are incredibly resourceful and you're also an investor, which makes you even more relevant for our audience of private equity. We're gonna spend 10 minutes, you and I, um, sharing three questions before moving to Q&A. So all the viewers can ask you questions with the little chat box called Q&A at the bottom of the screen. And, but there's so much to cover. So I think we should have you back for a longer session. All the more so as you're going to be conducting a training for us, uh, LPA members, on impact of all things. And I just want to say three things. So you're an investor, you're an adjunct professor at uh, Sacred Heart University, and you are an impact advocate, which is something you do in particular through your uh, company called Time with two eyes, if I'm correct. You are correct. Uh, and, the, and I like how you call it. You say this is an impact catalyst. And I think it's a great way to cover it because your clients range from institutions to individuals, family offices, corporates. Uh, and you also have a couple of uh, board mem mandates to advise uh, foundations and, and uh, development institutions. Uh, and so this is probably a, a go-to um, uh, go reference in Luxembourg in particular. You've been here for 15 years and most people know you locally, but the idea of today is also to spread the word beyond our, our borders. So welcome, Hedda, and, and tell me if, I, if you want to add something or correct anything that I said. Nothing to correct, nothing to correct. Great, so um, the three questions will be partly generic because you know our membership community in private equity had very different levels of awareness, knowledge, and familiarity uh, with the impact world. And, and even I have to say, I'm still learning a lot as a more conventional investor. Can you tell us very quickly the, how you differentiate ESG from impact for sustainability and green finance? Remembering that our uh, previous and first leading lady was Julie Becker, who's quite an inventor in the field of green finance. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to not get lost in the taxonomy of the sustainable, responsible investing soup. I actually wrote an article on that um, on, on the Time website, just saying that this is, this is very confusing. Um, what I can help do is say that sustainable, responsible investing, this category that includes negative screening of removing some areas and domains of investments, is very broad. I mean, we're, we're talking about 30 trillion uh, in sustainable, responsible investing. Um, a smaller subcomponent of that is impact investing, which is the, the, the domain that I represent um, and that I believe in. And impact investing is very different because we're trying to contribute to solutions. You're investing not just in removing uh, organizations that are not values uh, aligned, but really looking for measurable societal and or environmental impact um, it's part of, you have a theory of change of how you can improve a certain issue. It can be in a thematic. Uh, and we were very, we're very careful with defining the difference between impact investing and ESG, which is, 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 is more of a filter and impact investing, which is more positive contribution to the, to the, uh, to society. If that helps. Of course, I think we should all join your training uh, later this month to learn more. But today I was a little bit taken aback by uh, two articles that are published on the FT website and that all of us can have a look at, otherwise happy to send them. And as you know, I shared them with you and it basically says that because we are in times of crisis, a lot of investors and a majority of investors are happy to trade off uh, ESG or impact criteria versus more uh, conventional ways of doing business. So what does that mean? And it's still confusing to understand the stance of investors. During this period, I'm not taken aback by anything. I mean, people are going and buying all the toilet paper they can. There's a lot of knee-jerk reactions and emergency reactions happening. And of course, when you are in a, a state of panic uh, and, and scarcity, and that's a mindset right now, you're going to do everything you can to salvage whatever you think you're holding on to. Um, so it makes sense to me that there's a knee jerk reaction that says sustainability is a cost. We need to reduce that cost and ESG measures are just additional burdens we're carrying and we need to survive this. Um, 
But if it's part of the DNA and the values of an organization to take care of their people and to make sure that they're environmentally responsible and to use, you know, ESG also has governance. And I, I find it very strange concept that anybody would compromise on such a core issue as governance. Uh, so I think people are saying a lot of things and there's a lot of panic reactions, but um, the articles themselves stated that longer term, people realize the sustainability in ESG are you know, long-term investments that you are making to ensure that you're not just building the kind of the future economy, but that you will be able to make sure that your money will be returned to you. So I'm not, no, no, yeah, go ahead. I'm just saying, I'm not surprised at all about the reaction, um, but I do think that it's going to settle when the rest of the panic settles uh, because it's core to the values of, of many organizations, even BlackRock, who's launched their impact fund. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make its way back very quickly. But I think you said the magic word about profit and performance. That's what private equity investors care about the most. So is there a trade-off to be done between the two? And maybe take us through a live example of an investment firm or organization that you've helped come up uh, you know, to the ladder of uh, impact investing if they asked you. So, so this, this question about the trade-off, I think is also applicable to if I invest in environment, can I be socially responsible as a trade-off there? Or can I do ESG or not ESG? We have a tendency to be very binary as, as people. For those of you that have read uh, Hans Strassling's book, uh, book, Factfulness, you know, people like to have black and white and good and bad. And that's also playing into this uh, reactivity around, well, we can't have ESG, and if I have impact or if I'm creating societal benefits that must come at the cost, we have to stop with that. That's a, that's a kind of a, a false choice that's being created. Um, they are not mutually exclusive. Uh, what I explain in the impact investing world is that you have people that are impact first, and you have people who are finance first in the impact investing space, which means that you choose as an investor, if you're willing, to forsake some of your financial returns to ensure the societal and or environmental return of your investment. That's a personal choice, but there's no defined or definitive trade-off. I know impact investors that are outperforming benchmarks and we have several portfolios that we show in our community. If that's your priority, you can invest at market rate returns with societal and or environmental impact. That's, there's, no, there's no definitive trade-off, but I know lots of people that are, are more, than, more than happy to leave some profit on the table to make sure that the longevity and the long-term purpose of the organization is fulfilled. Mm. That's a good transition to my last question before Q&A. So a lot of voices have been raised saying that this big crisis and having seen how the uh, climate change uh, issue has been tackled, you know, uh, in, uh, accidentally with the current uh, crisis uh, shows that we all need to become impact investors and do you, do you believe in this and what are the recommendations you would give to our audience in terms of uh, what they can do to step up to that? There's nothing I wish more than for everybody to become an impact investor. I think we've got a long way to go because in that 30 trillion that we stated is the, the global movement of capital towards uh, the societal SRI type of work. Um, only 500 billion of it is in impact investing, i.e. like measurable intentional societal impact. Um, I hope we're going to see a boost as people really reconsider this incredible opportunity right now to start building a better financial system and to working to creating like the new economy. Um, next steps is first of all, understand that you as an investor have the power to sustain and support the organizations that can build the new future, the, 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 the world that you want to see. So empower yourselves to realize that you can focus on finding those companies. There's best practice out there. There's organizations like Gin, Two Eyes, Tonic, Two Eyes, that can give you everything from how to to a directory of different funds across asset classes that you can invest in, where you can start measuring your risk return on impact as well as financial return. Um, so it's, it's, there's lots of material out there and we built a website called the impactgarden.org to help people navigate through sustainability issues. And uh, I think there's lots of sources to, you just have to be interested and listen. So Hedda, it starts with the desktop uh, effort to browse through resources or does it start with the chat with you or I'm trying sure. to be really tangible here because yep. we are a very conventional investor on my side. It starts with mindset. You have to be interested in it. You have to believe that, that you can drive more value than just financial returns out of your investment and that you have a role to play. So if you have the right mindset and you can absolutely do a quick desktop research, you can reach out. There's 
several impact investing organizations in Luxembourg and all over Europe. And by all means, you can always reach out to the time team and go to impact garden. And we're happy to help anybody out who wants to start on their journey. That's wonderful. So this is only the beginning of the journey. Hedda, uh, let's look at a couple of Q and A's, uh, you know, we're two ladies here speaking, but that's not the reason why I'm going to ask you a question about the gender bias. How does that tr translate in terms of, uh, uh, your agenda as an impact investor? So uh, a lot of my venture capital and private equity portfolio has a gender lens and even in my public equities and a gender lens means that you look at different factors of an organization, not just leadership, but supply chain, how products and solutions are marketed, um, how staff is treated. So we look with this gender lens, realizing that we believe diversity is fundamentally a uh, um, an alpha that will help out you outperform. And we make sure, and, and I do that for my own portfolio and we support other organizations do the same thing. Um, my private equity and venture capital work, I tend to, to support women led technology. That's my- And, and, and do they perform? <laughs> I wouldn't be investing in them. As an impact investor, I'm still, I'm still investing for financial returns. I do have a philanthropy bucket. I do do considerable amounts of grants and charity as well, but my investment activity is for financial returns. But for uh, positive societal uh, benefits as well. So again, no trade-off. So yes, they do perform. And in fact, my women-led technology companies are surviving quite well through this period because they're in gaming and other technology solutions and they're able to drive revenues and hold themselves afloat. Anyone you want to promote uh, specifically uh, in this list of your uh, women-led uh, companies or, or sure. firms? Love to. I'm sure they would love for me to pitch for them. So there's a company called Data Moran in the UK, uh, run, run by Mariela Alma, who provides uh, companies the ability to benchmark themselves on ESG factors. So again, in, this, in the same um, domain, and they're doing extremely well with their clients, very committed to, to the work that they're doing. Um, I have a gaming company called Toya, which helps gaming companies uh, address the female market. I mean, why would you be leaving the half the market uh, of children in the world for games if you're not designing characters and games that will attract them as well? So gender lens investing can go in many different directions. Okay, wonderful. So we should get the details of these people. Uh, another question I see here is you mentioned the BlackRock Impact Fund. Uh, and you're saying that basically shows that uh, impact is becoming more mainstream. Can you tell us a little bit about this uh, BlackRock fund? I cannot. I don't know enough about it. It was sent to me actually by a, um, a colleague in the space who said, look, even BlackRock has an impact fund, but there are, there are lots of institutional investors that are building impact pockets. Now we can bring up the question of how much is greenwashing or impact washing, and that's a totally different discussion. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, I do believe that impact is becoming an attractive long-term strategy that people are, are, are moving into from traditional investors and uh, conventional investors to certainly the core group of people that have been doing impact investing for some time. So I can't speak directly to the BlackRock Fund, um, but I will look into it and hopefully can answer that question. Next. Sure. I, I think it would be great if you could contribute to our next newsletter because, you know, a lot of uh, interest has, is, is being gathered now on your, on your area and we should uh, move to the front of this. Uh, time for a couple of more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the fact that everybody's very focused on healthcare now to find a, a vaccine or whatever can help cure uh, COVID-19? Uh, is this part of your remit as an impact investor? My, my remit, I focus on two domains, which is um, social integration and environmental protection, uh, which includes climate change. So that's where I have been working on my impact strategy for the uh, last 12 years. Uh, I don't do a lot of health care, although I do do maternal health. Um, what I think this question brings up, which is an interesting one, is uh, the issue that we mentioned earlier. Is there a trade-off between looking mm -hmm. at environmental issues or climate issues and social issues? Because E, S, and G, the S has been a bit ignored. People don't really know what to do with it. Um, right here, right now, given the fact the crisis that we're in, S has taken a new role, and healthcare and societal issues have become a lot more pertinent. But again, like the conversation about climate before, it doesn't mean that S is not just as important. These things go hand in hand. There is no trade-off. They have to work together. So I'm not personally doing much in healthcare other than maternal health. 
Um, but there are lots of funds that are starting up, not just on the healthcare side, and the medicinal mm -hmm. side, but also on COVID, like capturing companies and organizations that are suffering through the COVID crisis. But you could always argue whether this should even look for a financial return or just do it for the good of society. But that's an interesting debate. Hedda, uh, before we, we part, we wanted to ask our viewers to vote on a couple of issues that are close to your heart. Mm -hmm. So we're going to launch this poll now and the viewers uh, can choose their uh, answers. Uh, so let's launch this quickly um, and, and see what, uh, what are the questions are gonna be uh, like for the audience. So what ESG and impact investment training would you be looking for? And this is something which can help fine tune your, the training that we're gonna have with you in the next weeks. And we gave there five choices. Um, and let's see what kind of answers we get there. We cannot vote you and I. I can't vote. vote. No. I can't vote. I'd like to vote for the training I'd like to go to. <laughs> Which one would you pick? Um, I, you know, I feel like the most relevant right now is just for people to understand the difference between ESG and impact and to understand what that means and how to start exactly as you asked. I, th I think that's... And for me, it would be the measurement because we know we're all for members and, you know, we have this very active group PE for women, promoting women in PE with the ultimate goal to abolish it because we won't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, we would like to uh, say that uh, for us, this uh, gender bias is an inherent part of what you do, and, and it's a big deal. So it looks like the portfolio showcase has the most vote. We got only 20, but that's still something. And everything else matters. Maybe less regulation, actually, mm. of all answers. What, do, what does that trigger for you? I'm just looking at the answers. A lot of people are curious right now. What does your portfolio look like across asset classes? Are you just, is it just early stage investing that you can drive impact or how do you find it in real assets or how can you find a hedge fund that does impact, et cetera. And I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting modeling to do and showcasing portfolios is fun, but I, I'm getting the idea that people are interested in pretty much across the board and you should offer these types of learning modules mm -hmm. probably for all of them. So we will. And so, head up, if we, I have a little surprise for you before we close. For, I will ask you for the kind of word of the end, uh, because I know you're a very passionate advocate and very clear and great speaker. Uh, but I, I love your speech. I think we need more insp inspiring women like you in our uh, environment. And I don't know if you follow Julie's interview, but I offered her to become an honorary member of LPA and I'd love you to do the same. That's uh, very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, that's great. So, so what, what shall we say to the audience? And we will spread this word beyond today's interview, obviously. I think it's not time to stick your head in the sand and hope things get better. Um, I think it's time for everybody to empower themselves as investors to start, you know, this is an opportunity to build, to build a better financial system and to support the organizations and systems change that you want. So double down, do values-based investing, um, seek out new opportunities and fuel the new economy. Don't, don't sit around. Wonderful. Hedda, thank you so much and uh, see you around now that we are slowly deconfining and, uh, and definitely at the training. I will register myself. Uh, <laughs> everybody have a nice end of the week and see you next week uh, for two or three interviews actually lined up and a couple of webinars. Thank you so much. Bye, Hedda. Thank Thanks. you, Raja. Bye-bye.